All right, what is going on, guys? It's so, so, so good to have you guys on this webinar. Uh, so it's me, Ryan, and we got Brad on, and uh, it's been a long time for some of you since we've last had an opportunity to connect and speak with you. So for those of you that are on tonight that we haven't spoken to in, in some time, welcome and thank you for being on tonight. We're really, really excited about this opportunity to reconnect with you. Uh, we're excited about some of the things we're going to share with you tonight, not only the message, but the tools that we're going to share with you. And the whole goal of the webinar tonight is really twofold. Number one, it's to it's to really help provide a sense of clarity inside of your financial plan. You know, no matter where we met you on your path to financial freedom, everyone came because they were looking for something. They were looking for more control. They were looking for more a better, more solid foundation, whatever that is. We want to give you clarity tonight because clarity is the ultimate currency of the modern individual today. And we want to help give you that clarity on what you have and how you can use it. And then after that, what we're going to do is we're going to really point you in a direction of not only just being clear, but getting moving. And that's really the whole purpose of everything we're going to share with you tonight and on ongoing webinars is clarity followed by action. Clarity followed by action. That's right, Ryan. Like that's that's the overwhelming feedback we get from people is they they knew something wasn't working, they wanted a change, but that that change it, it's it's one of those. I don't know if anybody's ever heard the concept of the infinite horizon, but it seems like when most people enter and begin working with us, they think, "Great, I'm going to get this one thing, and that's going to solve all my problems." But unfortunately, when we solve that set of problems, it opens up another set of problems and another conversation that we need to enter and say. Well, how do we solve that next problem? So this is just kind of a natural evolution and we've intentionally reached out to everybody we've been working with over the last, gosh, has it been like almost seven years now with yeah. some of you at the longest to say, let, let's get everybody up to speed in a set of frameworks to understand how to always be answering that next question of now that I can see a little bit further into the future or I've done the things I had listed out before, how do I get oriented again? Awesome, awesome. So guys, we're recording the webinar tonight, so, uh, so we're gonna have a whole recording. We're gonna go through a lot of information with you tonight. Um, and, and really the ultimate goal of this is we want you to leave with, with a set of tools, and that's where we're gonna start. But we also, as Brad said, we want you to leave with the framework. So anyone, I think maybe on, on future webinars, we'll have a more interactive webinar to where you can we can see you and you can interact with us. On this one tonight, you can put in any question that you have and any question that you have put it in the, the questions box and we're going to answer those as we go um if you don't have any questions and you're just excited to get reconnected and get access to the tools then we'll we'll go that direction as well but we're right at the hour we want to be cognizant of your time so we're going to jump right into what we're going to share with you today so brad for for you and i over the last seven years it's been quite the journey um and i'm going to give you just a little bit of context of how i got to know brad so I, I was a little bit, not a little bit, I was a lot stuck in my financial plan. I was trying to figure out what to do and how to go faster and how to evaluate assets and all of this kind of stuff. And I met this dude over here, Brad, who, if you've ever seen the movie, The Matrix, Brad has the ability to look into the world and to make sense of it with numbers and math and, and you know, really principle-based set of thinking, but then pull those principles and that math into reality and give you a sense of direction. And Brad, when I met you, the way we think, the way we operate, and what we were trying to accomplish more than anything aligned us really closely. And for the last seven years, we've been going back and forth on ideas, both with ourselves and our own game plans, as well as now over the last seven years with clients as well. And the results that we've seen in our own game plans, the results that we've seen with many of you on this webinar, I can see so many names that are on here that I, I know where you're at in your game plan, and I'm so excited for it. But the results that, we, that people have been able to have with this clarity has been phenomenal. So today, Brad, why don't you bring up your screen and kind of uh, uh, we're going to introduce you to something that we've shared with you, because one of the biggest challenges I think that so many people have in the type of financial planning that we do is that they're reliant on meeting with us or meeting with, you know, getting clarity on what to do with their policy and how to put money back. And there's always questions around that. So today we want to empower you with a set of training that is specifically focused on using the tool, using the vault, or in some cases for many of you, the vaults that you have, so you know how to use them to get the specific outcomes and objectives that you're looking for. Whether you're getting close to retirement, you're investing in real estate, you're investing back in your business, you're paying for your kid's college, 
we want you to be clear on how the policies work, both now and in the future, so you're empowered to use them to get the results that you want. So the big give, the big thing we're excited about, guys, is we have a massive gift to you guys um, to make sure that, that you never are without answers ever again. So we've gone through iterations of this, and I know we've, we've shared this in times over past, and this is just version whatever this is, 7.1, whatever we've got up to. This is, this is the, the, the latest and greatest and best effort of us to be able to get in front of you the ability for you to self-learn and continue to push through um, and, and continue learning, just like Ryan said, how to access and utilize the tool we've helped set up for you. But Ryan, before we show all of this cool stuff, there's words on the screen that nobody yet understands. Ryan, what is a vault and why do they care about education about a vault? That's a good question. All right. So in the world of marketing that we live in today, um, there's all kinds of different ways to brand or name a thing. So your life insurance policy that we set up with you, as Brad and I sat down a couple years ago and we, we really wanted to create a model for financial freedom, which we're going to share with you tonight. Um, we wanted to have a way to identify what the what your life insurance policy is, what what characteristics, what attributes does it embody to help you get the outcome that you're looking for. And the, the word, the, the idea, the thought that we kept coming back to was this idea of a vault. I want you to envision and think about the life insurance policy that each one of you have on this webinar. That is very similar to a vault that you might have in your home. It's safe. It's private, it's protected, only you have access to it, but you always have access to it. You can turn the combination, open up the vault, take your cash out. It's eliminated, we've eliminated taxes inside of your life insurance policy. We've given you the ability to leverage and use your money in multiple ways. We've protected the most important asset in your economy, which is you, through life insurance. And so the vault, more than anything, is a way to identify what your life insurance policy is. So and I, I would add to that one quick thing, Ryan, that it's also it's not just a marketing thing. Because the challenge we kept running into as as we talked to more and more people is people like, oh, yeah, I heard about that life insurance thing. And, I, and my cousin sells Index Universal Life. That's the same thing, right? And well, no, it's not, right? Or I've got this policy from like 30 years ago that my grandma set up for me. That's, that's what I need, right? So I already have the tool. Now what do I do with it? Well, no, it's not. Not all life insurance, as you guys understand, especially after working with either me or Ryan, You've understood that not all life insurance is created equal. So we've named our approach to setting up life insurance policies as the vault to also distinguish it from the many other ways other people talk about this concept. Because for us, there's, there's a very narrow approach to how these policies need to be set up and maximized to get your outcome. So that's the other element of this. So we want to start using this language so we all know that we're talking about the same thing. Not just any life insurance, but the ones we specifically designed with you guys for your outcomes. Okay. So guys, with that being said, we want to get into a training that we're going to share with you tonight. But the big give for us is over the next week, what we're going to do is we're going to be sending each one of you an email with an opportunity to create a password to gain access to this account here. Uh, Brad, why don't you just scroll through it really quick. What this account is. This is detailed and specific training specifically around how to use your life insurance policy. No matter if it's with Mass Mutual, with Penn Mutual, with New York Life, with One America, whoever your life insurance policy is with, these are trainings that if you're just beginning and you're just starting growing your wealth versus if you're retiring next year, we've set up a series of trainings and a framework to help you understand how to use your vault all along that continuum. Um, each one of these little tiles represents a video each one of the videos have several downloads associated with them. So why don't you scroll up to the top, Brad, and let's let's just open up the first training, and I'll kind of show you what to expect when you get access to this. So this right here is a video that it's the vault system, and it's a video that we talk about how the life insurance works, how you can set up a system to take money out and systematically put it back. You'll notice on the right-hand side there's two downloads. There are two little PDFs. You can download these. Each one of these videos is going to explain to you a set of tools from how do you determine how to pay a policy loan back, how do you take a policy loan from One America or Penn Mutual or whoever it might be. And so there'll be PDF downloads associated with each one of these videos and you can watch the videos and take action. Watch the videos and take action. If you scroll back out, Brad, um, there we've got a section here that we talk about the five different frameworks of using your policy, right? Whether you're using it as a foundation or you're using it 
to, to build wealth. So five utilizations. Down here, the next set of training is, um, this is specific training and this is, we get pretty detailed on this. You know, if you're nearing retirement, how do we balance your assets? If you have money in a 401k and money in a life insurance policy, how do you use those two assets together to maximize your income? And again, downloads associated with them. So this is a training platform meant to empower you more than anything. It's meant to empower you with your vault because some of you we've talked to a lot over the years. Some of you we might not have talked to very much and we want to make sure we feel a strong connection and a commitment to you to make sure that that the tool that you have you're empowered to use it to get the outcomes that you're looking for so that's what this this platform is meant to accomplish yeah. now again so, if you have any questions type them up in the question bar specifically yeah. about this and i'll answer them as we go and just to be clear with everybody we're gonna we're going to if you're a client of ours um we're going to grant you access to this uh, just as part of being a client with us and you should get notified give us till probably early next week to finish adding everybody to the database and sending those emails out. So if you don't see anything by, let's say Monday or Tuesday, March, that'll put us at March uh, like 11th or 12th, um, then as, as data is this way, it's never perfect and sometimes things might get skipped. And if you haven't got an email by the 11th or the 12th, reach out to us and, and we'll, we'll make sure to manually upload you into the system. But we're in the process of getting everybody uploaded so that, that by about the 11th or 12th, everyone will have access. And you get to go in and create your own username and password so it's totally private to you. You'll just get a link that will walk you through the setup steps. Awesome, guys. Well, so grateful about that. Shelly, good stuff. Can't wait. Can I, uh, Shelly, I can't wait to have, have you have access to this. You're, you're one of the ones out there actively using your vault. It's, it's fun to watch. So with that, guys, we're going to transition out of this and we're going to go into really a series of training. And over the next three to four months, our, our goal with you guys is to go back through what you set up and empowering you and how to use it. Because the vault, in my opinion, the life insurance policy that you have is one of the most dynamic tools that you will ever have access to. And with, with as dynamic as it is, you need a set of uh, principles and a framework of how to use it to get the objectives that you want. And you know, when each one of you came to us and set up your vault or your life insurance policy, I don't remember very many of you saying, I want a life insurance policy. What I remember a lot of you telling me was, I want financial freedom, or I want control, or I want clarity, or I don't want as much risk. You know, we, we talked about what you wanted and we're using money and specifically your life insurance policy as a tool to get the outcome that we want. So today what we're gonna do is we're gonna share with you a set of a framework and some of this stuff we might have shared bits and pieces with, of, of it with you, but this is truly the framework that Brad and I believe in, that we operate by, and that we've used in our personal financial game plans over the last 10 years. And for the first time, we're going to share it with you front to back, all the way through, so you can see how the vault fits into your ecosystem, no matter where you're at in your financial plan. And, and yeah, Ryan, we've shared bits and pieces of this before, but the reason we wanted to start here is... There's, there's always a question about what do I do next? Or, hey, I heard about this thing, or what's the next opportunity? And so many, the, the reason why this framework is where we start is what we want to avoid at what we call the grocery store problem that we see so many people having, right? Think, see if this describes you. And it came out of one of the emails, you might've read it, but I'm gonna tell the story really quickly again. So many people's financial plans look like this. So think about the last time that you were on a diet. And then let's imagine that while on a diet and hungry and feeling deprived because you can't have all your favorite foods, you decide that it's a good idea to go to a grocery store. So you go to the grocery store to shop for all the foods you need to continue on this super healthy diet, but you forgot one little thing. You forgot your list. So while you're walking up and down the grocery aisle, staying focused on the, the good nutritious food that you know you're supposed to eat, what sneaks into your cart? Ryan, what sneaks into your cart? Oh, man, if it's me, it's Pringles and Oreos. <laughs> Oreos is, is my big one, too, right? Or the, the Samoa cookies are my other ones, the coconut and caramel and graham cracker ones, right? Like, that's the stuff that's going to end up in your cart. And you may check out with an entire cart full of food, but you're going to get home and find out that you've got nothing to eat because you didn't follow the plan, okay? So what we want to give you is a framework and it's so many people's financial plan, they, they, they come and they show me this thing and it looks like a hodgepodge. Like I can tell 
what year they bought the thing because it was like the top thing. Everyone's got a little bit of cryptocurrency and everybody's got a little bit of options. Everybody's got a little bit of foreign currency and everybody's got some blue chip stocks. And it was because that was the thing that everybody was talking about. And so they felt like they needed it. And as long as they were adding good things to their cart, they'd have a successful plan. But unfortunately, that's not how it works. You have to have the right things in the right proportions to get the outcome that you are looking for. And that's what we're going to go through is how to build a formula so that you know what you need next. And it, that, it's not just the next exciting thing because a financial plan full of really good products does not necessarily equate and actually often does not equate to financial freedom. Cool. Let's that do it. All right. So the first concept, I'm going to take this one that we're going to dive into is one that we call uh, now, Brian, the first time you heard this, this kind of hurt your feelings. It hurt my feelings. So who in here feels like they're a really good saver? Uh, for me, this this is, you know, this was something that was a really difficult paradigm for me to break. And we're, I'm always really careful when I introduce this paradigm because saving is the foundation of everything we do, but it's not the end objective if we're doing it the wrong way. And for me, at my, 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 I think it was my 15th or 16th birthday, my dad gave me a contribution to a Roth IRA. And from a very young age, I was taught how to save. And that was built into my DNA. I've always been a really good saver. But when I really sat down and did and, and went through the numbers with Brad, like he's going to go through with you here today, I realized how futile it was to follow a broken path that wasn't going to get me the outcome that I'm looking for. And many of you inside of your financial plans might feel like there's something off. Today, going through this one principle and going through the math behind it, this is going to clarify and articulate why you feel that way. Okay, so saders are losers. If that's the tool that we're trying to pick up to solve our financial plan, I'm gonna show you why you're, you're gonna end up losing, okay? So Ryan, let's take just kind of a, an example person. You can, this might be a little more than you, a little less than you, but it's gonna get the concept across. Ryan, would you say that if somebody had $250,000 saved up, they'd be doing better than average when it comes to allocating money for retirement? Absolutely. Okay. And then let's say that somebody that saved, so we're starting with $250,000. Um, how much are we going to assume this person is saving? Would okay. They've got that much accumulated. They're probably saving a decent amount. Let's say they're saving $25,000 a year. So $25,000 a year toward that objective of retirement. Now, if somebody has the capacity, I'm gonna back this off just slightly, Ryan, so that we stay inside. I'm gonna say 18,000, because what we say is everybody needs to save at least 10% of their income. If you're not saving 10% of your income, um, we're gonna actually train on this on, a, on an upcoming webinar we've not announced yet, but we've gotta figure out how to save more, right? It's just not generally possible. But So let's say that this person makes $180,000 and is able to save 18,000. That sound pretty reasonable? Okay. And they've got 250,000 already set aside for retirement. Okay. Now the next question we need to answer in order to solve this problem of are, am I on track or how much do I need to save to be on track is we've got to, we know where they're at and we know what they're adding. We now need to, to figure out how much they need accumulated to be able to retire. Right. And this, this right here, I think, is one of the biggest challenges in traditional financial planning is there really is no target to shoot for. We're just told to save and kind of cross our fingers and hope that one day we have enough. But how many have actually ever sat down and did the math to understand and know without a shadow of doubt what enough actually means? When Brad went through the math of doing this inside of my game plan, I was blown away at how much I needed to save. And this is when I realized that I could not save my way to financial freedom. So, Brad, Go, go a little bit deeper on this. Yeah, because I don't want you to believe me. We're just going to look at the numbers. The numbers are going to tell us, right? One of our favorite sayings is math is the path, right? If we can understand the numbers, the math is going to tell us what to do. So no matter where you go, and we're taking traditional financial planning for a minute, we're just going to take them at face value and say, great, if you go to your stockbroker or your mutual fund advisor or your HR director and everybody telling you mutual funds, 401ks, IRAs, and you say, how much do I need saved up? The answer they're going to give you is going to be very close to this number. There's lots of different ways to get there. There's super complicated ways. And then there's rule of thumb ways this way, but mysteriously they all come to about the same number. Now in the training you're gonna get access to next week, there's some downloads that help describe this in more detail, but we're gonna, we're gonna use what we call the 4% rule or the rule of 25. 
the same thing either direction that you go. But what you need accumulated is 25 times the amount of income that you want to retire on. So let's say this person making $180,000 wants to maintain that lifestyle in retirement and needs $180,000. That means that's not right. Yeah, there you go. Times 25. That means we need $4.5 million accumulated in order to retire. So Ryan, this is becoming pretty clear that like you're going to start getting nervous. $250,000 felt like a lot and we were patting ourselves on the back for a minute. But once we realize what we actually need set aside, if we're playing by Wall Street's rules, we need $4.5 million. And, and we're not going to go into too much detail on why the 4% rule exists, but you can go Google that. That's very traditional financial planning. But and the reality, as well. yeah, yeah. So the, the reality of this is, I mean, when you look at it, just, just let, let's say that this person wanted to retire a year from now, right? They have a lifestyle that where they're accustomed to living on $180,000 a year and they have $250,000 saved. So one of two things has to happen. They're going to run out of money in a year and a half where they have to dramatically reduce their lifestyle. And for most people, the concept and the dream and the, the hope of retirement isn't living on ramen noodles. I mean, that's not what most people want. They want to do some of the things that for many people, they've been putting off for years and years and years. They want to have the ability and the permission and the financial backing to be able to do it. So the rule of 25 is simply a way to say, look, how much money do you have to have saved so you can spend down your assets over a period of time and give you the highest probability of not running out of money? And if you're retiring tomorrow, maybe your number's a little bit smaller, but if I'm retiring 30 years from now, 180 grand isn't going to go as far as it, as it goes now, right? So, this, so that's what I'm saying. There's all these other elements into it that it basically comes back to roughly this number. So what I drew up here is now we're starting to identify the gap between where somebody is right now at 250,000 saved, allocating $18,000 a year to where they need to be, which is 4.5 million. Now, as we toe up to that gap, if it's very small, if it's if it's like the you know the sidewalk outside, then we don't have to change a lot to be able to bridge that gap. But if we toe up to that and it's the Grand Canyon, our effort and what we need to change and what we're doing needs to match the size of that gap. Would you agree? Absolutely. Of course. Okay. So there's one more number we need to be able to really truly identify what is required to bridge this gap. Because we're taking these as, as the input assumption. So $250,000 plus $18,000 a year somehow has to magically turn into 4.5 million. The last thing we need to look here is how many years we want to accomplish this in. We're gonna start this out with 10. Now, Ryan, tell us the significance of 10 years. Um, well, the significance, our, our view of the type of financial planning that we really want to empower people on is we believe anyone can be financially free in 10 years or less, anyone. And it comes down to understanding and util utilizing the right principles. But that's not a typical number that's thrown around in the financial world. I mean, it's all about working for 30 to 40 years. So the plan that we've put all of you on, the tools, the things that we teach, the techniques to follow can put you on a path to be financially free in 10 years or less. And Ryan, we've had the pleasure of helping hundreds through that process to where they are either on track or actually have accomplished that, okay? So we're gonna start with, great, Wall Street's rules, my outcome. I believe I can, I can deliver on everybody on this webinar that if you followed what we're gonna talk through, you could be financially free in 10 years or less, okay? So now we know, it. now it's simple math. Now it's just the rate of return required for that to happen, okay? 250,000 plus 180,000, which is 18,000 times 10, right? Is everybody following along there? 250 plus 180, at, a, at what rate of interest would be required for that to turn into 4.5 million? Okay, so everybody watch, there it is. It's only 30%, easy peasy. We got this in the bag, right? Who out there is, is, is supremely confident that every dollar they're saving is going to work at a 30% interest rate. Ryan, is anyone raising their hand? I don't see any hands. Any, any hands getting, does anyone have a guy or a system that's getting them a 30% rate of return? <laughs> so this is where we sort of end the discussion of why not a 401k? Well, what about my employer match? Or what about the tax you know, savings that I'm going to get on that by doing that? 
unless it's doing 30%, it doesn't matter, right? Index funds, sure, they got super low costs and that's awesome and they're really easy to use. But if they're not getting us 30%, it doesn't matter. Okay. And here's here's where so many people feel stuck. I mean, when I first sat down and I did the math for myself, I came up with very similar numbers and I felt stuck because the only alternative I had in this scenario was if I don't feel like I can earn a 30% rate of return in 401ks and IRAs and mutual funds and all of that, then what's my alternative here? The only variable is I can reduce what I what financial freedom means to me, right? Maybe I'm only going to live on half of the income that I'm used to living on now. Or if I at the very least want to maintain my lifestyle, I can. I have to go back and start figuring out how many years it's going to take to get there. So let's okay. start addressing that variable. And here's the crazy part. Here's why I want to point out savers or losers. Ryan, what if you said, okay, that's not possible in the investments that I have. So I'm going to solve this by saving more money. So everybody out there, imagine doubling the amount that you're going to save. Is it possible? The majority of you are probably shaking your head, but the reality is it is possible. It would just require a massive lifestyle change to make that a reality, right? But it is possible. So if you committed to the lifestyle change required, we better get a massive result in that required rate of return because it's going to be a massive sacrifice to make that happen, okay? So doubling the after-tax savings from 18 to 36, okay, everybody watch because that number is going to change. Let's take a look and see what happens. Did everybody see that? it went down by 3%. Now, congratulations, you only have to save 27%. Who's frustrated? Who's angry about this? Because I was. And here's the reason why this is the case, is we have bought into a game that is fundamentally stacked against us. This is a compound interest curve, right? Everybody understands and has seen that. Which side of the curve do we want to be on? Do we want to be on the left-hand side or the right-hand side? Well, of course we wanna be on the right-hand side, but there's one requirement to get to the right-hand side of this equation. The only way to do it is for to allow for the passage of time. That's why doubling savings over here where nothing is happening has no impact. Does that make sense? It doesn't make a difference. It's impossible to save your way to a 10 year retirement. That's why we want to share the next couple of items with you about how to break this. But I want to go one step further, Ryan. I want to go down the road you were talking about here. Let's put savings back to 18,000 because most people can't change it that dramatically. The only other variable we have control over is how long we wait until we can retire. How long we sit back with our hands like this, praying, that the market pulls through. Praying that Donald Trump doesn't say that something stupid and tank the market. Praying that interest rates hold out, right? So let's, let's go 15 years. Let's see if 15 years. That helps a lot, but can you still get 18%? For most people, they can't. So 20 years, getting closer. What about 25 years? Man, nine or 10 is still a challenge. 30, 35. Most people are now at 30 and 35 saying, yeah, I think we can do that. We go to 40 years. You are trapped in a 40 year game because all the independent research we look at and the experience we have clients bringing back to us and talking about their traditional investments is you're not doing much better than five at the end of the day. The market is not you. The market is not your results. This is what most people are getting. So you are stuck more or less in a 40 year game unless we change something. Okay, so that's the first framework. And, and the, the one principle that we wanna leave off here with is saving is the foundation, but we need to have a way to be more empowered and directed in the right way. So the second thing that we're gonna go into is how do we keep score? We just came off the Super Bowl. I don't know how many people on here are football fans. If you're a Patriots fan, they won again, what's new, right? But here's the reality, any, in any sporting event, we can turn, tune into the sporting events and we can know in a moment who's winning or losing and it's based on the score. And if we can look at a team over a period of time and continually, you know, constantly look in and see that this team is winning year after year, Super Bowl after Super Bowl, 
there's probably something about that team that stands out and is different about all the other teams. We need to have the same way to look inside of our financial plan and be able to tell in a moment's notice whether we're winning or we're losing. And now I think that's one of the biggest challenges with traditional financial planning is, yeah, we've got $250,000 as we did in that case study up there. And yeah, that might feel really good, but are we winning? And remember, go back to what we want. We want control over our time. We want to be able to retire. We want to be financially free. So the way traditional financial planning teaches us to keep score is using a metric called net worth. Now, anyone, everyone on here is probably familiar with that concept. Net worth really simply is add up all of your assets, add up all of your liabilities, and the difference between those two numbers is your net worth, positive or negative. And on paper here, if that, that, that case study that we did up, up, up above, if that individual has a $250,000 net worth, yes, that might be a positive indicator that they're doing something positive, that they're saving more than they're spending. Um, but does it help them know if they're winning the game? And for most people, it doesn't. So net worth, in my opinion, is completely irrelevant to the concept of financial freedom and retirement. The, the real target that we need is we need a target that will measure how much income our assets are going to produce. And if you can make this one simple shift in the way you look at your financial plan, it'll have a cascade effect that will ripple throughout everything you do. It'll give you a sense of lenses to be able to look into the financial world to say, it doesn't really matter how much I have accumulated. What it really matters is how much income that asset will produce for me, how long that income will last, and how passive that income will be. So it's cash flow that is the real indicator of success and whether or not you're winning inside of your financial plan or losing. So for now, us, at the end of the, oh, go ahead. At the end of the day, all we want is our time back. And a big pile of money doesn't necessarily give us time back. What gives us time back is the ability to consume that, to take that as income. That's why cash flow or income is the only thing that we measure our retirement success based on. Now, does net worth play a role? Of course, because you can't have cash flow of zero net worth very often. But what we're trying, this is why it's important, is we are trying to buy back time. Yeah. So the framework, and, and you're going to see a lot more detail uh, of this inside of the videos in the, uh, in the community, is cash flow greater than expenses. And guys, look at that framework really simply. That is so easy to know if you're on track or off track. Look at the assets that you have, how much income they either are producing today or will produce in the future, and compare that against your expenses. And you'll know at that point, if you have $5,000 a month of expenses and $1,000 a month of cash flow, you'll know that you have $4,000 more to go to bridge that gap. You'll know where you're going, you'll know where you're at, and you'll know exactly what is needed and required to be able to bridge the gap. And, okay. and this goes as well to really getting clear on what assets we want in our portfolio. If I have an asset that I have no idea or no ability to predict how much income it will create, it's the wrong asset because it's not helping us solve this equation. It's not playing by the right rule. Awesome. Okay. So that's principle number two. Now, principle number three, now we need to, now we know, we, we know the principle that we can't save our way to financial freedom. We know how to keep score inside of our financial plan. Now we need a way to be able to look into the world and say, look, out of all of the things that I could do, what are the few things that I should absolutely do to get me the outcome that I'm looking for? I think one of the biggest advantages of living in the world that we live in today is there are hundreds, if not thousands of options for everything, right? If you want to go out to dinner tonight, Let's say you narrow down what you want to eat to Chinese food. In that genre of Chinese food, you could pick from hundreds of restaurants in a small geographic radius to be able to eat that, that, that type of food. The same goes with your financial plan. Brad, you mentioned the grocery store analogy, right? There's a new hottest, greatest thing to do. There's no end to things people will try to sell you to help you financially. There's no end to that. So the, the first lens that we want to give you guys to look into the financial world is this concept and principle that we call the core four. Inside of your financial plan and the decisions that you make of what investments to choose, there are two things that you have to increase within that investment, and there are two things that you have to decrease within that investment, okay? The very first thing that you have to increase, we talked about this earlier, is you have to be able to increase your rate of return. Going back to principle number one, it's evident and obvious that we have to make our investments earn a higher rate of return to bridge the gap, especially if we're talking about 10 years or less. But... If we go out to a traditional financial person and say, hey, I want a higher rate of return, the next thing that comes out of their mouth is, okay, well, how much risk are you willing to take? 
I remember when I heard that the first time, my financial advisor kind of laughed at me because I put all of my money basically on red and I picked the stock within my 401k that had the highest number next to it. And he chuckled and he said, it's okay, you're young enough to take the risk. And I didn't know what he meant at the time, but now looking back on it, I felt the pain in 2008 when I lost almost everything I'd saved. But you have to get a high rate of return, but not take more risk. We have to fundamentally reduce risk at the same time. Okay, so increase return, decrease risk. And that might sound like an oxymoron for so many people, but we're gonna show you how to do that on the next principle here. The next thing that we have to increase. I wanna interject one thing that just popped yeah. in my head here, guys. First, we need you to understand that what we're going to teach you, the way to get your result, the way to be financially free in 10 years, not 40, the way to have control and feel empowered in the conversation of money is not to play this game better. Because it doesn't matter how much better, it's not going to be better enough, okay? We need to understand how the wealthy have done this, those that are financially free, that didn't hope and wait on the stock market, and look at what they did. And what you'll find is they didn't do the same thing better, they did the exact opposite. Warren Buffett's first rule of money is don't lose money. Rule number two is never forget rule number one. This is Warren Buffett, who we're told has to be this big risk taker, but he's fundamentally not. He does this. He maximizes returns through minimizing risk, okay? And then he does two other things that we're gonna keep going into. Okay, so the next thing that you have to be able to increase within that investment is your level of control. Now, I want you to take just a moment and think about that and let that sink in. I remember for me in the beginning, as I started looking at what I could do that was better than what I was doing in the, in the beginning, I, I tried a lot of different things. I listened to all the gurus. I read all the books. I tried all the different strategies. But for me, I never really felt like I had control. I felt like I was riding a roller coaster. Sometimes I was up. Sometimes I was down. And I couldn't duplicate my success. And if you're not in control of your financial plan, there's two questions that we have to answer. If you're not in control, can you impact the outcome? You can't. And if you can't impact the outcome, what, what is your only other alternative? It's to sit back with your eyes closed and kind of cross your fingers and hope that it works out. So you have to be in control of what you're doing. And this, again, narrows down the options that are available to you if you want to impact the outcome. Not in control of which stocks you pick, in control of the outcome of your investments. Yeah. And last but not least, remember why you're saving. We're not saving to have this big net worth. That's not the goal. We're saving to have income right? Cash flow, which means if we're deferring our biggest liability, which is taxes, that is going to significantly reduce the income that we have to spend, or it's going to increase the amount that you have to have saved so you can account for taxes. But yet what we're told to do is the exact opposite. We're told that we're going to retire in a lower tax bracket. And that might be the case if you will intend to retire poor, but that's never been the conversation that we've had with any of our clients. We want each one of you to be able to have the same lifestyle, if not a better lifestyle upon financial freedom, which means it's not about deferring taxes. It's about fundamentally eliminating and reducing them. Yep. Okay. So this is the lens that we have to look through the world at. And if we can't systematically increase return, increase control, decrease risk, decrease taxes, we need to pass and move on to something else. And if you have never seen an investment that fits this criteria, the problem isn't that the, the, those investments are out there. It's, it exposes the fact that we need to get better educated, right? Because they are out there. Okay, now the key to doing this, this sounds wonderful and amazing, the key to doing this lies right here, okay? We need to focus the most on how do we increase our control and decrease our risk. If we can do those, the other two pieces are easy, right, Ryan? Yeah. And those are the two critical drivers that we spend all of our time looking at. Anytime somebody talks to me about a money or investing opportunity, the first questions I try to get answered, is how much risk do I have to take and how much control do I have? Okay. And we do that with the fourth element that we want to share tonight. The fourth element of this is what we call the four pillars. Because in every investment, Every single investment, there are four ways that you can make money. But guess how many of those that we're actually taught? One. Generally, we make the, the, an average investment can make money one way. It's not that the other four pillars aren't there. It's just that you're only getting one of them. OK? 
Okay. So if we can understand the four ways that every investment can generate a return, we can be moving toward this idea of increasing our control and decreasing our risk. Okay. So let's step through those four different ways. The first way, this is the one that everybody gets. Okay. This is the one that's handed out, like thrown out like candy at a parade. Everybody gets this one. Okay. It is appreciation. Right. Whatever we're buying will then in the future be worth more than we paid. That's a return. Right. And unfortunately, Wall Street has done such a good job convincing us that this is the only way to make money. They've taken just about every other investment and forced it back into this idea of appreciation. They'll tell you things like, sure, cash flow is awesome. I love cash flow. Let's do it. I've got a mutual fund over here for you. And it still goes back to the only way you're making money is if the thing you bought is worth more down the road. Okay. The risk is, is how much control do we have over the change in the value of that thing? No matter how much research we've done, how much inside information we have, the second we push by, all of our control is gone because it depends on something totally external to us. Okay. So appreciation. Now, do I like appreciation? Sure. Have I made money on appreciation? Yes but it's after these next three items, okay? So the next item is the most important of all the pillars, okay? It is what we already have talked about above, it's cash flow. I learned this lesson in 2008. I bought real estate in 2006 and early 2007. Ryan, how was my timing? Horrible. Boom, terrible. I should have gone bankrupt just like everybody else did, except I understood this one concept. So I bought real estate and my appreciation in 2008 was not looking very good. But those properties were putting cash flow in my pocket every single month. So did I care that my property value dropped by 25%? It didn't feel good, but you just sat back and collected your rent checks. But I waited, right? Cash flow makes every investment never worse than a bad haircut. All I had to do was wait for it to grow out. And I actually sold all those properties in 2018, last year, 2018, and, and made massive appreciation because I had the staying power to wait. And I knew exactly the role those properties were, paying, were playing in my equation. I knew how close they were getting me to financial freedom. Okay. Now, on the flip side of that, though, Brad, I mean, I, I bought real estate in 2010, 11, and 12 and ongoing. And over that same time frame, just like yours, was it possible that you could have a, an asset that was rising in value and paying you a positive rental income every month? Yes. So you're making money in two ways, two of the four pillars working for you at the same time. Now that's important. So I decrease my risk when I can make money two ways, because if one's not working, the other can. That's how our, our risk is decreased. Okay. And then... This, this impacts our return because I can get appreciation and cash flow. I'm now stacking returns, right? And this accelerates my game plan, okay? So to accelerate it further, the third piece is it, it ties into the core four, it's tax benefits. Now we never let the tax tail wag the dog However, that appreciation as it was happening, if I cannot pay taxes on it, wonderful. If the cash flow that's hitting my bank account every month, if I can pay little or no income tax on that, even better, right? So we've got to understand it, but we need before, before anybody goes crazy and says, oh, I heard about cool ways I can do things inside of my self-directed IRA, like, wait a minute, okay? This needs to be permanent. So the thing that we don't pay taxes on never comes back to bite us in the future. It is a permanent tax saving. Okay. And then the fourth pillar, after we have the other three, we can understand the most powerful of all the pillars. Okay. This single pillar affects the other three exponentially. Okay. And as I've stacked these returns, if we can understand this pillar and effectively use it, it will change the game both in the from a standpoint of control and a standpoint of returns and that is leverage okay so those are the four different ways that we can make money i'd ask you 
How many of those are you getting in your investments currently? Cool. Powerful question. That's a powerful question. So guys, the, the reason we're sharing this framework with you is this is the framework that we use really in the type of financial planning that we do. And we, we want everyone to see from tip to tell how all of this comes together. But think about what this will do for your life, right? I mean, when you go, when you go into the game and you know what you're trying to accomplish, right? You know where you're at, how much you're saving, you know what financial freedom means or retirement means, not because you're measuring off net worth, but because it's cash flow, you realize that outside of you being able to save a lot of money it's going to be very very difficult for you to save your way to financial freedom now we come back to this way that you look into the world and say look 97 percent of the assets they might be good right it's not that mutual funds are bad but it's are they going to get you what you want and here's the reality money is just a tool and just like any tool in the hands of the right person it could be used to build and do something amazing or in the hands of some, you know, someone who is uneducated or unable to do anything with it, it could be used to destroy. So our goal with this webinar, our goal with launching this vault education site, our goal in working with you is to empower you in the conversation of money, to empower you so you know how to use money as a tool to build and live a life that you love now and in the future. All of it is going to come centered on this framework of, okay, look, now I've got all these things. How do I put it all together so I know exactly for the next dollar that comes into my life, what is a system, a decision process to say, what do I do with it? Perfect. So the culmination of this is great. Now that we have the right frames, we have the lenses of the core four, we have the understandings of the four pillars. How do we, what goes into our cart? What is our recipe? How do we organize all of this? Okay. And a quick little backstory to how we, I mean, this is effectively asset allocation, right? Where does each dollar need to go to be moving us toward a plan? And I actually developed this way back in like 2012 and 2013. Um, and back then I had, I had the fortunate chance to, to spend a little bit of time with a, a multi-millionaire. I think he was worth well over a hundred million dollars at the time, a gentleman named Mark Ford. And Mark Ford's the founder of one of the largest financial education newsletters in existence called Agora Financial. They do over half a billion dollars a year in revenue off of their newsletters okay that's 500 million dollars a year and talking to him I, I got a chance to have dinner with him um, and then hang out with him afterwards and and so the thing i wanted to ask him at dinner was this question what is your view mark on on how somebody should allocate their money to get them to financial freedom as quickly as possible and i framed it that way on purpose how to get to financial freedom as quickly as possible and so I walked through what we're going to quickly walk through here and dive into more detail in future uh, interactions with you. But I walked through this and as I was doing it, he just leaned further and further back in his chair, crossed his arms and just got a big smile. And when I finished, he said, Brad, that's one of the most amazing things I've ever seen. And you're 100 percent spot on. That's how I built all my wealth. And that's how every successful person I've ever met has built it. And I've never seen it explained better. And I started to get excited. I was like, cool, let's get this out. You've got a $500 million reach to be able to get this out there. And he just kind of shrugged and laughed and said, we'll never print it. I was like, what are you, what are you talking about? You just confirmed that this is the thing all of your readers need. Why would you not print it? He's like, well, we can't make any money off that. Because everything, every, what everybody wants and everybody is willing to pay for and what everybody is chasing because it's no surprise to all of you on the webinar that you need a better return. No, that's not a surprise to anybody. And so what they do is they look at return and see the one way that they can make money and they chase this little tiny piece right up here. And that's what sells newsletters. So he's like, we'll never print it, but you're right. So I said, Fine, Mark, screw you. I'm going to figure out a way to get this out. That's what we've been working on. So we're going to take you through that organization of how your wealth needs to be organized. And then this is going to set the tone for the future interactions that we have because we're going to continue to do these webinars. We're going to continue providing value to you as we as we educate you on this. OK, so the, the bottom of this pyramid, the foundation of, of everything is you. And that goes, I think that's why, that's why the financial industry doesn't want to sell this. They, they want to disempower the individual to say, okay, look, you go out and make the money, but you're not smart enough to know what to do with it. So just hand it over to someone else and somehow, some way 
someone will care more about your financial plan than you than you do. And we just barely covered that up in the core four. You have to be in control. That doesn't mean you have to do everything, but you have to know as an investor what to do to get the outcome that you're looking for. So really quickly, the three ways that, that I want you to consider investing in yourself, and I wanna pat each one of you on the back. You're here on a Thursday night, which means you already believe this to be true. You invest in your mindset to be able to see a vision that other people can't see. You then invest in your skill set to take that vision that you have and transact on it in the world and you invest in your network. So these are three areas that you invest in yourself and these investments will build a sense of certainty inside of your financial life because they're the things that can never be taken from you, right? When you, when everything else falls apart around you, the mindsets and the skill sets and the networks that you have, that is what you take with you. That is what you rebuild with. This is the foundation of everything we do. Okay, so moving up from there, we want to show, and this is the training guys, that this is why we're so excited for you guys to have the course. And we do have a hard stop at the top of the hour. We apologize, we said we were gonna answer questions. Don't worry, we will type them in, email us. We're gonna do another webinar, but we do unfortunately have a hard stop at the top of the hour. So the next item is we have to build the right foundation. Just like every great building has a solid foundation, your plan needs the same. They're not sexy, they're not exciting, but they're required. So we talk about the foundation. Then we move up and the only thing that we focus on next are, are items that pass our core four, four pillars test. That's it. And guys, this is not a race to the top. This is a sequential process to building it out. And where I wanna stop real quick right here is say, if we stop here, this is all that's required to be financially free. If we do nothing but invest in ourselves, build the right foundation, and focus on investments with core four, with all, all four pillars and all elements of the core four, we can be financially free in 10 years or less. In fact, it's the only way. If we try to jump this and fill the rest of the pyramid out, it's only going to slow us down. And then guys, the reality of all of this, the exciting part about this, we all came and, and we all started working together. Every single one of you on this webinar tonight started working with us because of the foundational piece. This is the vault, this is your high cash value life insurance policy. But if all we do is we put our money in that life insurance policy and we hope that it works out, you know, the good thing about your policy is it's gonna give you guarantees so you know what it's going to do. But if we go back to rule number one, right, it's going to be very, very difficult, whether it's in the stock market or a vault, it's gonna be very difficult to save your way to financial freedom. So, so much of what our education is going to consist of is reframing what we're trying to accomplish. Your vault is the foundation and it's what you do with it that's going to make the biggest difference inside of your financial plan. So the last two elements so we can finish this and then give you guys the last piece is the next element are investments with only two to three pillars, okay? There are times that that makes sense, but for us in our world, if we're wanting to get to financial freedom as quickly as possible with the least amount of risk and the highest amount of control, those come after financial freedom for the vast majority of you. And then the last, the very top, is what everybody thinks they want, but it's all the investments with only one pillar. That's typically appreciation, okay? So what we, the, the starting, if this has excited you and, and shown you some things you hadn't seen before or clarified what you were already feeling, then the place to start is as soon as we send out that link for you to create your account is to get in there and start consuming because this is where we begin breaking it down. We wanted to give you the entire framework so you can see the vision of this, and then the step-by-step the, the -step elements are in that training. That's where we want to start. And then in the next four to six weeks or so, we're going to email you guys. So watch out and look for it. We're going to set up another webinar where we start systematically working through all of these elements with everybody so that after you've consumed it and watched it in the modules, you can come on, get additional insight to it, and then interact with us and ask questions. Okay. So that is the best path through learning is to dive into those modules as quickly as possible. Awesome guys. Hey, we want to, we want to just close off again with, uh, with how, how excited we are to be reconnecting with so many of you and, and really our intention and goal of setting up this webinar is to empower you with what we've already helped you build, empower you to use the foundation that you have to get the outcome that you want. I don't think I've ever met anyone it, that, that we've built their financial plan that they told me, they wanted to have you know, millions and millions of dollars and cars and houses and all of, all of that stuff. That, that, all that stuff is fine, but what most people have told me 
is they want to have peace of mind. They want to have time. They want to be able to spend time with their family. They want to be able to do something that's purpose driven for them. And so that's really the whole objective here. It's to empower you with money to control your time, to empower you with money, to be clear about every dollar that comes in, to use it like a, a tool to get the outcome that you're looking for. So guys, we're excited to connect with you. Um, as Brad said, we'll send out a link so you can register for your for the, the education platform that we introduced. And we'll also send out another email to invite you to another webinar to where we can go deeper on all of this stuff. Okay, is there any last minute questions we can handle in the next five minutes, Ryan? Yeah, yeah. We've, got, we've got one, Ryan Grunwald, he's looking for ideal rate of return to look for in an investment to arbitrage the cash value and the policy. Good question. Um, first and foremost, it has to exceed what you can already get there, right? And then it has to be worth your time to pursue it, okay? And, and so unfortunately, that's going to depend and really, the reason why I gave you the formula, oh, I, uh, this right here, is this is an equation. Like you can Google a, a rate calculator or um, and put your own numbers in and see what interest rate you need. Because it's different. If your gap up here at the top, if your gap is very small, then you need you only need a small rate of return when you leverage your policy. But if that gap is large, you're going to have to do more work and you're going to have to look for higher value investments that you leverage your policy into. So there isn't a one answer, it's understanding, you need to first get clear on your gap so you know what that is. Awesome question though, Ryan. Okay, well we're gonna have to close it down. We do have a hard stop right at the hour. So guys, thank you for taking the time with us tonight. We look forward to reconnecting with each one of you and uh, we'll be in touch via email soon. Do you end it or do I end it? I think I end it. Okay. So good to connect with everybody excited. Then Ryan will end this whenever we get the button.